In this video, we're going to take a look at the scan processing nodes. So here in the library, underneath material filters, we have a new scan processing category. And we have a host of nodes here for working with scans, cleaning, and processing scan data. So we also have some templates to kind of get you started. So here, we'll come up to File, and I'm going to create a new substance. And you'll notice here underneath templates, we have scan processing for physically based metallic roughness and specular glossiness workflows. So here, let's take a look at one of these templates. I'll just click OK. And so here, you're presented with a simple graph, which gives you some starter nodes on processing some scan data. So the idea here is that I would import my resources. So here I have this leather. I have uh, four samples here. And these scans represent multiple light angles. And so I could take these uh, images here, and I could process them through this multicolor equalizer to balance out the lighting. I could then take these multi-angle textures and process an albedo, a normal map, and then I could run it through an auto tile node to create a full tiling material. So like I said, these templates just kind of get you started. So now what I would like to do is run through a practical example on how we can use the scan processing nodes to create a leather material. So here in my substance package, I've imported in four scans. And these scans were taken from specific lighting angles. So in this case here, I have a 180. This one is a 90. This one is at a zero angle. And this one is at 270. And they're moving in a counterclockwise direction. These scans were also created in a non-square ratio. So let's go to the actual resource itself. And let's take a look at this 180 degree scan. So I'm just going to fit this to view. And you can see that its resolution here is actually 5,530 pixels by 7,360. What I'd like to do is crop those to a specific area. Because when I import or instance these textures here into my graph, it's going to be forced to a square ratio. So what I'm going to do here is use this multi-crop node. So let's take a look at this. So I'm going to hit the space bar. And I'm going to start to do a search here for multi. And you can see that uh, here I have this multi-crop tool. And so I'm going to use this node. Uh, also, you can find these nodes here underneath the scan processing category in the library. So with this node, uh, first thing I'm going to do is set my input count. And so like I said, I have four scans or four samples. So let's set this to a value of four. And now I'm just going to uh, input my scans here to the node. All right, so now that I have this set, the next thing that I need to do is set the correct input size. And that's the resolution of the scan texture itself. And as you recall, I have a non-square ratio to this. So I'm just going to enter these values. And so here in my 2D view, I can now use this crop widget to set the crop area. To see the crop area, I want to make sure that show crop area is set to true. And then here in my 2D view, I can just set this area. So I'm just going to choose an area like this. So once I have this set up, I can just take my show crop area and set this to false. And so now I've cropped all of those multi-angle scan textures. So now I'm going to hit the space bar here so that I can uh, view the tiling. And you can see that we have some discrepancy here between our light and shadows here in our scan. And so what I'd like to do is uh, be able to equalize this. And we have a node to handle that specifically called the multicolor equalizer. So again, here, I'll just do a quick search for multi. And here is the multicolor equalizer. So first thing, again, uh, input count. Let's set this to 4. And uh, then let me input my scans. My input tiled method is going to be set to false because we haven't, we're not working with any tiled data. So the next thing I want to do is just go ahead and set my radius and my bright and dark balance. So I'm just going to uh, set these values here until I get a good result. Here I'm using a bright dark balance of around 0.07. That's going to handle the equalization of my bright and dark values. So the next thing I would like to do is extract data. And uh, we're going to create an albedo, a normal, and a height. So now what we're going to do, uh, again, I'll hit the space bar. I'll come into multi uh, just to filter my results. And I'm going to choose this multi angle to albedo. And my sample count for this here, we're going to set this to 4. And again, just input in my textures. And so now I have an albedo map. Let's also take care of my normal. So here I'll do a search for multi. And we're going to use multi angle to normal. Samples count is going to be 4 as well. In my case, for the format, I'm going to leave this at DirectX because that's what I'm working with here in Designer. 
and I need to input my textures. So for my normal here, you can see that I have a setting uh, for this first sample light angle, and I need to set that. So that's going to be whatever the angle is for that first texture input. And uh, as I explained earlier, I have these guys set up in a specific order. So we've got 180, 90, uh, 0, and 270, and it's moving in a counterclockwise direction. So here you can see that uh, by default it's set to 180 for my degree and the next sample light angle is going to move counterclockwise. We also have a clockwise option as well. So with that set up, I already have my normal here and if I like I can increase my intensity. All right, so there's my normal and the last thing that I want to extract is my height. So here I'm going to hit the space bar and I'm going to just choose uh, normal and we have an option here, normal to height, high quality. And then I'm just going to take my normal and plug this in to create my height. And for the quality, I'm going to set this to high. So now we have uh, our extraction process completed. We have our albedo, we have our normal, and we have our height. So I'm just going to move these nodes around here just so we can uh, make a little bit more room. So now that we've completed the map extraction process, what I'd like to do is take a look at cleaning some of these files. Uh, namely the albedo here. So if I take a look at this albedo, uh, I can see that I have some kind of detail or more higher frequency detail in here that I would like to actually remove. And so a good way to do that would be to uh, clone some of the area from here and replace it here. And I can do that with a material clone patch tool. So if I hit the space bar and I start to do a search for multi, you'll notice that we have a multi clone patch tool for RGB and grayscale. However, I have a albedo, normal, and height, which is going to make up my material. So I would like to have this cloning process happen across this material. So I can do that by utilizing a material clone patch. And so if I start to type material, you'll see this option here towards the top. So this guy here, uh, actually going to set my graph into standard mode by just hitting one on the keyboard, I'm going to come over to my channels and I'm going to disable the channels that I'm not really working with. And that's going to be my roughness and my metallic. So here you can see that I have input for base color, normal and height. So let's just input these maps. And we'll double click so we can view the result of this clone patch node here in my 2D view. So now we have these two transformation widgets. And this is actually something new in Substance Designer 6. If you have a transform parameter, you can actually expose that as a widget here available in the 2D view. And that's what we have here with this node. So since there are two transforms exposed, we have this dropdown that allows me to choose which one I want to work with. So here we have a target offset, and here we have a target source. So with target offset selected, I can move this widget and this, and this gray shaded area here is going to indicate what this target area is going to represent for the cloning operation. So now I'm going to come over here to my source offset and I'm going to choose the area that I want to do for the clone source. And I can increase the size of this here. All right, so we're going to look at kind of this area. So now I'm going to zoom in here to my target. I can start to adjust the edge parameters, which are indicated here in my transform widget by this gray shaded area. So for example, if I kind of start to lower my threshold here, you can see the result this is having on my shape. I can also adjust the grid resolution. Now in this case, I think I want to have a higher grid resolution so that this shape is matching this leather cell pattern that we have. And I can also choose to kind of blur this. So I'm just going to add a little bit of blur to this shape. So now that I have my target and my source set up, I can just come over to my show patch area and then just disable this. And so now my cloning operation is complete. So now that I've done this kind of cleaning process, I'd now like to tile my base color normal and height. And so I'm just going to hit the space bar here and start to do a search for auto. And you can see that we have this smart auto tile. So I'm going to uh, just create this node here in my graph and then just hook in my maps and we'll double click so that we can view the results here in our 2D view. And so if I zoom in really close, I can start to see where these seams are and then I'm just going to come and just lower my threshold here. And that's going to remove that seam. I also have options for blurring the seam. So we'll just add a little bit of blur to this here, uh, as well as adjusting my grid resolution, my smoothness. And I can also enable this use mask option, which is going to allow me to 
add a user defined mask area which is going to allow me to indicate to my parameters where the tiling is going to be taking place here in my image. So here I'm just going to set that to false. So now I have this set up as a tile. Now in this particular example, the roughness was created manually. So let's take a look at that here. So you'll notice that I have two uniform colors and each one of these values is going to represent a different level of smoothness. And those values are just being blended together here with a mask. And that mask is just simply uh, created here from the height, just using a histogram scan. So when we look at the result of this, you can see that the kind of raised areas, as indicated here in this mask, are going to get uh, a more smooth value. And the cracked or cavity areas are going to get a more rough value. And so that's just output here to the roughness. Now, this uh, example is also using uh, this specular level output. And this is very specific to the metallic roughness shader. So in a metallic roughness workflow, the dielectric F0 reflectance value is hard-coded in the shader at 4%. However, here in Designer, you can override that by using the specular level output. So that means that you can feed in a value as I'm doing here to override that 4%. All right, so one last thing that I would like to do with this. So here we have um, our material. In a sense, uh, we're talking about our base color, normal, and height. Those are maps that we extracted here from our scan. I'd like to uh, then kind of colorize this. So a good way to do that is just to simply use the color match tool. So I'm just doing a search here for color match. And I'm going to take my base color and just add this here to the input. Now, with the source color mode here set to average, I can actually colorize the average color values from this texture. And so here, I'm just going to come over to my color picker, and I'm just going to set this to uh, kind of like a brown value. And then I can just take this uh, output here and plug this into my base color. And so now, I was able to just colorize that albedo to get a different look. And so here, as a recap, you can see that we take our multi-angle scans. We can then crop them and then we can balance the light and shadow. From there, we can extract data such as albedo, normal, and height. Then we can go into a cleaning process by using the clone patch tool. And then finally, the last step would be then to set the textures to tile, and then we can colorize the albedo if we like.